So I've talked about cinema lenses a lot on the channel before. I've also talked about how to convert vintage lenses kind of into cinema lenses, you know, make them more usable for a professional environment. But today we are gonna talk about the full set of the Mikey cinema lenses for full frame cameras. Now, Mikey did send me the rest of these lenses. You know, previously they did send me the 35 millimeter T21 full frame cinema lens. And now we are going to talk about the other lenses in the kit. Mostly I wanna talk about how they all perform together. You know, I wanna see if they all match and how the usability is from a full set standpoint. Now, the reason these lenses are intriguing is because they cover full frame. They're fully housed in a metal body. They've got the full uh, cinema gearing on here for follow focus with the long throw, you know, the 0.08 uh, gear pitch here. And they also have stepless apertures, which are really, really nice. They have 11 iris blades inside, which gives them really nice circular bokeh throughout. And they're just like an amazing build quality for the price. These lenses only cost about $1,000 a piece. Some of them are around 1,200, some are like 900. But they kind of average out around $1,000 a piece. Or you can get this whole kit, the four lens set, the 24, 35, 50, and 85 for 20 and it comes with this nice little lens case with that if you buy the whole set. Mikey did send me these lenses to review, but this will not be a biased review. I will be talking about it totally from just the standpoint of how I use them and what I like about them. So I'm gonna talk about the whole set, but I'll probably end up focusing mostly on the 24 because it's the newest addition to the lineup. And um, 24 is a really nice focal length. You know, it's really wide and get really close to your subjects, get really intimate with them. And with that T21 on a full frame, you get really nice shallow depth of field. So I'll probably focus more on this one because this one's not quite out yet. I'm probably one of the first people actually to try it out and give it a test. So I got these lenses in, I wanted to try them out in a practical shooting environment like I like to do on the channel often. And so I thought this might be a good opportunity to show off something that a new friend of mine is doing. He's starting to make leather goods. So I thought I could pop into his shop and film him kind of making um, something out of leather and kind of try out each lens in that environment and see how they kind of operate together, see how the follow focus works on there and stuff like that. So that's what we ended up doing. So I tried to use every single lens during this setup, um, you know, using the longer lenses maybe for close-ups and the wider lenses for wider angle stuff. But then also I used the 24 to get in kind of tight and just kind of see the minimum focus distance on some of these lenses. But I really wanted to see how the follow focus performed on here a remote focus and a manual focus. So I actually tried it with both just to kind of see if you were just kind of doing a run and gun situation by yourself with the follow focus, how they worked. Um, and then also with the remote focus, like as if there was an AC there. And so with trying these out, everything performed completely as expected from a cinema lens. I was able to quickly take the lenses off and on and mount them back in the exact same spot where the follow focus was located. So the follow focus could just mount onto the lens every time you never have to adjust it. Like with my vintage lenses, they're all different sizes. So you have to kind of adjust the follow focus every time you put a new lens on. But with these, the, the good thing about cinema lenses, they're all being the same size. They all have the same filter threads and stuff like that. You can just boop, put, put that back on there. Really nice, something to note about using a manual follow focus though. These are cinema lenses with a really long throw on them. So you will have to kind of crank hard if you wanna get a big, nice turn if you're using kind of like a smaller mini follow focus. So keep that in mind, but that's standard for all cinema lenses. So I definitely prefer using a remote follow focus 
focus in this environment because you can quickly turn a knob all the way around after it's calibrated to the lens. So no issues there. I would say out of all the lenses, um, the 85 was the one that maybe just felt a little bit different. It just had a little bit of a stiffer aperture ring on it. Um, but other than that, everything seemed to work totally as expected. I could just take my ND filter and slide it on and off each lens because they all have the same filter thread. They actually have a 77 millimeter here in the front and then they have an 85 millimeter outer diameter for putting on matte boxes. And that is something to note, the 85 millimeter outer diameter isn't a super common size. Um, I'm sure there was a reason they did that for economical reasons to get these prices down on here or something like that. But you will be able to find plenty of adapters or donuts. You just probably have to buy them after you buy your matte box. Just something to consider. And maybe some matte box manufacturers actually don't carry an 85 millimeter. So something to research before you pick a matte box for your lens. So all these lenses are the same size. They all seem to to function pretty much the same. And so for all this footage, I'm using the Sony FX3 with an EF adapter. Um, these do come in PL mount, EF mount, L mount, RF mount, and E mount, I believe. Um, so they come in basically every mount you can think of right now, which is really amazing. And for me, the EF was great because I'm actually shooting on my Red Komodo these days, and I've been using the Canon Speed Booster, the RF to EF Speed Booster. Um, and so these go right onto that, and I can get that full frame look right on my Komodo, and these have zero issues with that setup. But for the sake of these tests, I use a true full frame camera to see how they performed. So once it kind of finished inside the shop, I went outside, and I mostly stuck to the 24 millimeter. And that was the one I wanted to try out the most anyways. And you can see here it performed very well. There's lots of separation in the background when using this lens. The lens isn't too soft nor too sharp. It kind of is in the middle there, which I really like. There is going to be some chromatic aberration on these lenses. Um, that's to be expected with a lens at this price point. Um, if you watch my 35 millimeter video, which you can see up here, you can tell there's some chromatic aberration, but that's not really a Thing that bothered me much. I actually just shot a commercial with these lenses as well. And the, the chromatic aberration only showed up in like one shot. And that's because I was shooting into harsh light uh, backlit windows. And that's when you might see that a lot. But for the most part, it did not bother me. But it, like I said, that's something you're gonna get with a less expensive lens, but that's okay. I kind of like the in-between look. I don't want something too sharp or too perfect. I want something that um, just performs the way I want it to, you know, you know, actually focus when I want it to. The aperture doesn't slip too much on these. Like these have a nice, you know, tension on them. So you're not like fumbling around set and accidentally kicking your, your aperture over to something else. And they're also just not too clinical in that way. I wouldn't say they're super vintage looking like my vintage lenses, but they also don't look too modern and too clinical like some mirrorless lenses. They're just kind of right in the middle, which I like about these lenses. So you can see here, they flare pretty nice. There's 24 millimeter out there with the sun. Rather than having some weird colored flare, like some random big purple flare or big red uh, bulb coming off of it, you know, these kind of are much nicer. Some, sometimes in here you could get that little eyelash flare, which kind of looks like a little rainbow. I really like that look. So I was very pleased when I could see that these flares were very controlled and they didn't like really mess with the lens too much. Like any lens, if you shoot a light right into it, you might lose a little bit of contrast on the lens. But with these, I felt like it was a very controlled contrast and nothing that stood out to me as low quality. Oh yeah, and if you like that little camera wrist strap that Andrew was making, the leather wrist strap, um, he is doing a limited run of those straps for anyone that clicks the link in the description here uh, on my channel. They're normally like 60 bucks, but I think he's gonna do a special for 40 bucks. Um, so if you want one, you wanna be kind of unique and not use just a peak design strap on your camera. Um, his company is called Harrow and Sickle. If you wanna check him out, and like I said, I'll have all this stuff in the description below. Okay, so after I kind of did that shoot and kind of try them in a practical scenario, I wanna do just a quick kind of, it's a non-scientific test, but a test where it's kind of controlled and I can see how they all compare. And based on this, like I said, the flaring is very controlled. I really love the bokeh on these lenses. When you stop them down, you're gonna keep that circular bokeh. And I feel like it's really important when you're shooting on a full frame camera, because a lot of times the depth of field is too shallow on a full frame camera. So what's nice about these lenses, first off, is they're T21. So when they are wide open, you get that nice wide open characteristic. You're still gonna have your subject in focus because it's not like a T13 or something like that. And then also when you do stop down the lens, you're not getting that weird hard edge bokeh in the frame. You're getting circular bokeh basically all the way to like T11 on these, which is really nice. I mean, I was watching an Apple TV show last night um, and they shoot on like the Panavision DXL2 full frame and they were using really nice lenses. Every time they put on a long lens, you could see the bokeh in the background. They had to stop it down to make sure the subject was in focus and the bokeh had these really hard edges in it. And to me, that's not very pleasing. So it's nice that these just like really affordable lenses get rid of that problem for you.
you can see here, based based on these tests, they all perform very nice. Uh, the throw is nice, the, the bokeh is nice. The only difference I did see here is that the 85 millimeter definitely had a different color cast on it. The coating is not quite the same as the other lenses, so that is something to consider. I don't know if there's something that is going to be addressed, but it doesn't quite match uh, the other lenses. Of course, in pose, just a little bump of the color and you can match them back up, but that is something to know if you are gonna buy this kit. and pleased with these lenses. Other than that kind of 85 millimeter color cast, I feel like these lenses, I mean, I use the 24, 35, and 50 most anyways. So for me, this kit's really gonna work out for me and I'm really excited to have it. So if you're in the market for affordable cinema lenses, I would not hesitate to recommend these to you. Um, I actually shot all the B-roll of the lenses, like 90% of the B-roll of the lenses with these lenses on my Komodo. And to me, I feel like those images probably speak for themselves. They look beautiful. I think the images look amazing. I just did a commercial with these lenses, no problem at all on set and made things very easy um, and very like I just trusted the lenses the whole time I was shooting and that's something that's really important when you're shooting um, a paid project like that. So if you have any more questions about these lenses or if there's something I didn't cover that you wanted to hear about um, feel free to leave a comment below and I will do my best to address that. Until next time guys I'm Spencer Sakurai. See ya!